So like I said, so many people know it. When the devil is coming like a, uh, like a witchcraft, like a lion. So, so many Christians are prepared. Our prayer life is solid. But see, so many people don't understand when the devil is coming like a friend. When the devil comes like a friend. When the devil comes like a believer. Have you not read scriptures that the Bible says, even the angel of darkness disguised himself as the angel of light. We satani angeli okunku ama bi ago a ago angeli malewo. That you be shocked. The devil putting on color. Beloved, so many Christians have backslided on this platform. That's why God started putting this teaching in my aunt September last year. I started preparing it since, since sex, September last year. Gradually, step by step. So let's take the first scripture. Everybody be on your feet in honor of God's word as we'll, we start from Genesis, uh, sorry, Matthew 26, verse 41. Ulama Fibere. Matthew 26, verse 41. Christiani. Mighty, why is Simi? Bobby Angel, we play that hymn for us. And make sure you use the strings. If you know it, we'll sing it together after one minute. Can we take it together now? Christ might be my book. Boy, you know, we are all Because of time. Let's read Matthew chapter 26, verse 41 together after the count of three. And you must be vocal. One, two, and let's go. Watch and pray that you enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. One more time. Watch and pray that you enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. May the Lord give us understanding. This teaching we have started today, we will grow in the knowledge of it. We will not fall into temptation. Wisdom to continue to excel over temptation, may it be effective in our lives from now in Jesus' name. Now be seated. Now listen, Jesus our Lord was instructing here. And can you imagine, for the first time I noticed in the word of God that to conquer a particular thing, prayer is not enough. I don't know whether you understand that imagine Jesus had to say, watch and pray, which means no matter how prayerful you are, you don't need only the spiritual aspect of it in order to be saved from falling into it. So it means that the issue of temptation, you need more than prayer. You need more than prayer. You need more than prayer. Taban soro kreti idan wo. Iyan ni lo ju adu alo. Esha mag badu a fumi. Esha mag just be praying for me. Be praying for me. You need more than prayer. This is the first time I see that prayer is not enough. Which means that the bird that will help you to conquer temptation is, will not fly with one wing. It requires both watching and prayer. So it, be, it means that in order to conquer temptation, not to fall into it, you need both spiritual and physical principle. You need to apply the bolt. You need to open your eyes and you need to be praying. You need to be praying and you need to open your eyes. Hallelujah. So our anchor scripture has really opened our eyes to it that by, uh, by making us understand that we need more than natural and spiritual assistance if we will avoid falling.
falling into temptation. Now, for you to say watch in our other prayer, it means that if it is not, you need more than natural help. No matter how watchful you are, when it comes to temptation, you still need to pray. I will tell you what temptation means as we go on. Hallelujah. Watching is our natural role. While play, praying is our spiritual role, you know, in order to conquer temptation. Watching is our natural role. Spiritual role, uh, I mean, uh, praying is a spiritual role. So when we are praying, now because we are praying. Now, the issue of temptation is so important eh, to the point that even in the Lord's Prayer, you know it is there. He said, deliver us from temptation. Deliver us from temptation is part of the Lord's Prayer. It's part of the prayer you as a Christian must be praying every day. Now, let's start by saying the dictionary translation for the word temptation is the act of number one, enticing or seducing. Now, dictionary meaning for temptation is enticing, seducing, luring, or inviting. Ma for a cap book where Paul. Now, untan penny temptation is seduction. When we are calling about temptation, we are talking about inviting. When we are talking about temptation, we are talking about enticing. Now, bringing all these words together, you will discover, listen clearly, that temptation is to make something or someone to look so attractive to the eyes. Now, to tempt a person is to make something so attractive, so catching, so calling to the point that the person will want to have a taste of it. That's what temptation is. That's why we need more than prayer. We need to also watch. That's why we need more than watching. We need to also pray. Now, I call temptation satanic advertisement to make you sin. That's what I call it. When the devil decides to make advertisement in order to make you sin against God. You know, I don't know whether it has happened to you before. They will market a product in such a way that by the time you buy it, you now test it, you begin to regret why you bought it. Uh, I don't know, it has happened to me several times. The way the marketers will present it. Ah, I remember one day like that. We received a text message on our phone that, congratulations, you have won a free ticket to travel, uh, a, a sponsored uh, traveling. Uh, there's a way they cap it. The meaning is that I won a trip, me and my wife, to travel abroad and it will be sponsored by this particular company. So in order to come collect our tickets and whatsoever, we should be at Premier Hotel. Ah, that day I woke up around 4 a.m. Finished my prayer. My prayer was full of thanks. We got to Premier Hotel that day. They said, are you Pastor Folabi? We said, yes. I don't know how they got my number. They sat us down. But what really shocked me was that some people got there, saw the sitting arrangement, and turned back instantly. But me, I have not gone there before. So I sat down, gorgeously. Somebody came out, gave us a seminar of Abraham Lincoln. Another person came out, gave us another uh, seminar. They were just bringing different kind of... Uh... So as they were going, I was suspecting that way to... Way to... Is it not these people that want to sell product? Then one finally came up. You know, I've been doing this product. I've been selling this GLND. I told my wife, stand up. Stand up, let's go. Look at how they, there's so much package. Now that's how, that's what temptation is. It is when the devil so much package a thing in such a way that makes you feel that you should just have a taste of it. Listen, we see from the meaning of the word temptation that the devil uses seductive and enticing methods whenever he wants to make a child of God to deny the faith. The devil uses what? Seductive 
an enticing method in order to make a child of God to deny the faith. I don't know whether it has happened before to, to you before. Anytime you declare that I'm going to fast today, that is when it looks as if you have not fasted before. By 10 o'clock, the worms in your stomach will start dancing. You now begin to wonder, what is going on? What is going on? Kilo shele. By 11 o'clock, it looks as if you are 3 p.m. already. You now be saying, what is happening? Aro, what says the time? The check time, 11 a.m. Ah, ah. Why is it slow? It's not slow. It's the devil trying to entice you. Now, let's go to the Bible. Genesis chapter 3. Please make sure that my monitor is working like this. I love it like this. Don't let it go, go off. Genesis chapter 3, it has gone off from verse from verse 1 to verse 10. Let's go. Let's see how the devil succeeded using temptation to bring Eve down. Genesis chapter 3 from verse 1. I read, Now the serpent was more cunning, that's the style of the devil, than any beast of the field, which the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, Has God indeed said, Has God indeed said, Has God indeed said, uh, 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 you shall not eat of every tree of the garden. You know, I've told you that most times, hear me, please come a little bit down, a little bit down. Most times, we are the ones that carelessly used to tell the devil the secret information that God has given us. Look at, if you look at this question, the devil didn't know what God told them. But he said, did God say you should not eat from any tree of the garden? Verse 2. But look at the response. The devil was looking for where to attack the woman. Verse 2, verse 2, let's move on. Verse 2, and the woman said to the serpent, we may eat the fruit of the trees of the garden. God said we can eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden. Oh. But, but in the next verse, he said but from the tree, but of the fruit of the tree, which is in the garden, God said you shall not eat it, nor shall you touch, touch it. Least you die. Then the serpent said, to the woman, you, sh you will not surely die. You won't die. Can you see that devil didn't come as an enemy? He came as a friend with good advice. Oh, le cool. Tobani, Tobani, sugar that you will le cool now. You will le cool. For God knows that in the day you eat of it, your eyes will be open. And you will be like God, knowing good from evil. Look at the packaging. This is temptation. Don't you want to be like God? That God that you are serving. Don't you want to be like him? Don't you also want to have money to afford the things that you need? Don't you want, don't you, you know, enticing this temptation. Now the next verse. So when the woman saw, look at this. He had packaged the fruit. It's the same fruit, oh. But because of what the devil has been saying to the heart of the woman, the woman saw that the tree was good for food. Ah, ah. So he said, temptation is all about the devil seducing. And using enticing methods in order to make you sin against God. Now look at it. That it is pleasing to the eyes. Can you see? Pleasing to the eyes. And a tree desirable to make one wise. She took of its fruit and ate. She also gave to her husband with her. And he also ate. Now look at what now happened when they finished eating. If you see that the fruit that they now discover was not special. Because if it were special... After they have eaten the first one, they will have gone for the second one. They will have gone for the third one. I don't know whether you are following me. But after they ate, then the eyes of both of them were open, and they knew that they were naked, and they shoot fig leaves together and made themselves. The Bible didn't really say when they ate the first one, they took the second one. When they ate the second one, they took the third one. You know when you eat good fruit that you like, that is different, there's a way you eat it. But when they finish eating the first one, they tasted it. But what happened? By the time they tasted it, their glory was gone. Understand that anytime the devil wants to tempt you, he shows you reason to do the wrong thing. He shows you reason to do the wrong thing. Show what they were sorry, see no man. Why they were my law? Oh, 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 o
Go and ask all the people that have fallen into fornication. By the time they finish doing it, they realize, ah, it's not that there's anything special inside this one's self, but they are falling. So that's why I see, every single time that there's a compelling force from within to make you do the wrong thing, understand that the devil is after you. Say, I hear. I didn't hear you clearly. So listen, let me read out from my notes here. This talks about how he successfully talked to Eve to see the forbidden tree as, a, as pleasing to the eyes and a very a, a good for gaining wisdom. Now, the same thing he did to Jesus in Matthew chapter 4. Go to Matthew chapter 4. The Bible says when Jesus was in his prayer and fasting season in the wilderness, the devil came to him. From verse 1, and said to Jesus, uh -uh, why not turn stone to bread? I see that you are hungry. Why not turn stone? Then Jesus was led up by the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. Now look at the tempting. What was the tempting? From verse 2. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, afterward, he was hungry. The devil will never put your temptation around something you don't need to understand that. He will always put temptation for you around your need. Now, when the tempter came to him, he said, if you are the son of God, command that these stones to become bread. Can you see? He came around the area of his need. You know why he came around this area? He wanted to mount prayer on him. I pray for somebody in the name of Jesus. May you not fall into temptation. Amen. Do you know that he did the same thing in 2 Samuel chapter 5? I mean chapter 11, 1 to 5. Let's look at it. 2 Samuel chapter 11, 1 to 5. That was how he got David to fall. 2 Samuel chapter 11, <coughs> 1 to 5. That was how he got David to fall. Let's look at it. It happened in the spring of the year at the time when kings go out to battle that David sent Joab and his servants with him and all Israel and they destroyed the people of Amnon and besieged Rabbah. But David remained at Jerusalem. Am I with temptation from verse 2? Then it happened one evening that David arose from his bed and walked on the roof of the king's house. And from the roof of he saw a woman batting. A woman was taking a bath. And the woman was very beautiful to what? To look at. The word behold here. Wait for me here. To look at. It means that the woman was beautiful in the eyes of David as at that time. But don't forget, this same David had how many wives at home? He had three wives. And those wives didn't travel. But why was she beautiful to behold at that time? The devil was setting a trap for David. Every single time there is temptation, the, the object looks so beautiful, so enticing, so attractive than every other product that exists. At that particular time. That's why you must be careful. That's why I always tell people, the devil with temptation has brought several Christians down than in battle. I was told about a, 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 a Christian, a young brother, he went to the mountain to fast for 21 days. And as he finished his fasting, right on the mountain, God sent somebody to him. Uluani I? Okay, 21 days, Sufi, what do you mean? I mean, I do I? He was so happy. He was so glad. And as he was coming down from the mountain, he met a lady. The lady gave him a ride. Let me take you. Where are you going? Do you know that? Eventually, as they were going, the lady said, ah, you are coming from the mountain. Me too, I was from the mountain. Can we just branch somewhere and eat? They branch somewhere and eat. They ate. Oh, can you know my place before you, I take you to your own place? He got to the lady's place, had sex with her, and that was the end of the glory. Many years ago, too, I went to distribute, we were distributing our bills. And I met one man who was a printer, very tattered and haggard. And he said, ah, young brother. That time I was much younger than this. Young brother, I was like you before. I was evangelizing all over the place. And as God will have it one day, God gave me an assignment to go and preach in America. I didn't have a church. He said, I didn't have a church. But God connected me and said, I'm sending you as a missionary to America. He said, man of God. 
Young brother, I said, yes, sir. He said, I didn't get to America before I lose my crown. I said, what happened? He said, the plane that I boarded, we had a stopover. He said, when we were traveling, I sat with a young American lady. And we were just discussing on the way, discussing on the way, discussing on the way. So when we had a stopover, I didn't know that her room was close to mine. I just had a knock on my room door around 1 a.m. Coco, coco, coco. He said, as I opened the door, this American lady was there. She was tying a towel. She just opened that towel. He said, Pastor, that was how I had sex with her. I got to America and I was deported. And this is me, back as a printer. Temptation. So at that moment, you know what I want to achieve now is to show you, go back to that first Samuel chapter uh, 5, where Second Samuel 5, verse 2. Second Samuel chapter, chapter 5, uh, chapter 11, sorry, chapter 11, verse 2. What I want to establish to you is that the tempting object at the time will be beautiful to behold. As you are looking at that thing, it will be, it will be something will be bubbling from inside your heart that if you lose this opportunity, you will lose it for life. Something will be saying to you, if you don't do this thing now, ah, it is gone forever. Ah, if you don't take this money now, you may never, never have a chance. Be careful when things are like that. God, hear me, does not compel. That's why if you see anything that is compelling, pushing you, pushing you to want to do something, find out first, is it the will of God for me? Do you know that without asking questions, show me verse 3, verse 3, because she was beautiful to behold. So David sent and inquired about the woman, and someone said, is this not Bathsheba? The daughter of Eliam, the wife of Uriah the Hittite. Is this not this man? And when I took time to find out, Eliam, hear me, the Eliam was the son of um, Ahitophel. So the counselor of David, Bathsheba was his granddaughter. But because there was this compelling thing, that's what temptation does. Je, 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 lo, 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 mu, 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 da, da, da. The thing is compelling. David didn't think any other thing. What did he now do? Show me the next verse quickly. Show me the next verse quickly. So David, okay. Then David sent messengers and took her. And she came to him and lay with her. For she was cleansed from her impurity and she returned to her house. Listen, if she was different from every other woman, David would have access with her more than once. But after that one, go. She went to clean herself and didn't return. Because David, he to see, and he But he had committed that sin. That's why you must be careful. Temptation, hear me, is the strongest tool. Of the devil in bringing so many people down. I wrote here, imagine how Amnon fell after he had finished raping his sister. I mean, how he felt after he had finished raping his sister. The Bible says he hated her more than the way he loved her. Why? After raping her, he realized, why did I do this? Why did I do this? Because don't forget what I've been saying. The object the devil uses to tempt you always looks more magnified than the others. May you not fall into temptation this end time in the name of Jesus. Every trap the devil is setting to make you fall, I pray for you in the name of Jesus. Ah, may you not fall. The f Listen, the first thing I would like us to learn here, here is that you must develop the courage to say no to your sinful fleshly desires. That should be our first lesson. You must learn to what? Have the courage to say no, no. Develop that courage. Everybody has what we call will. God gave us freedom to make choice. You can say no unless you choose not to say no. You can say yes unless you choose not to say yes. After all, by the time that the, 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 the uh, 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 Potiphar's wife held Joseph, Joseph was naked. 
The Bible says he was only tying it too well. And it's not like our days of boxers. Joseph was naked. And for madame to lay hold on his towel, I don't think he's from the back. He must have held Joseph in the front. We are the powerhouse is. And I know Joseph must have been begging. Look at what the scripture says. He said, madam, madam, mommy, there is nothing in this house that God doesn't allow me to touch. The only thing I don't touch is you, ma, because you are his wife. Ma, ma, please, let's not do this thing. Maybe madam drag him to the bed. Let's not, ma, ma, please, ma, ma, let's not do this thing and sin against God. Everybody has power to say no. Let me tap your neighbor. Say you have the power to say no. If you don't have the power to say no, there will be nothing like hellfire. Because God will say we don't have choice. Am I communicating? If we don't have power to say no, there will be nothing like punishment for sin. Because God will know that we don't have choice. But because he knows that we have the power. Now look at the punishment in Genesis chapter 3. He said to the woman, woman. No, he started with the man. No, he started with the serpent. He's a serpent. Because you lured the woman into this, which means serpent, you could have resisted the devil from using you. Because you didn't resist the devil, dust shall you eat all your life. Then he said to the woman, woman, <coughs> because you encourage your husband to do the wrong thing, which means, woman, you have the choice to say no to the serpent. He said, in pain shall you be all your life. In pain shall you be for, bring forth all your life. And your desire shall be that of your husband. And I said to the man, because you listen to your wife. Which means you had the power to say no. Every one of us has the power to say no. Don't let anybody come and say, eh, eh, Daddy, I don't know. I don't know. That company money, I don't know why it turned into my account. I don't know. It's a lie. Everybody has freedom of will and choice. That's why, look up. When you are being tempted, God will not appear. God knows that you have power to say no. You can choose what you want. And anything you choose is a choice you have made. The consequence you will also experience. Am I communicating? So understand, that's about first, the first point I want us to understand. We all have the power to say no. Nobody can force you against your will. We all have the power to say no when it comes to the issue of temptation. Hallelujah. <coughs> it's just that many people don't use it. Now, let's go deeper. Let's go deeper. Where am I? I'm looking for where I am now. Okay. Develop the courage to say no at the pressing time. At the pressing time. Then you will discover that there is nothing special about what the devil is trying to entice you into. Now, when you develop the courage to say no at that present moment, Beloved, you will now discover that that thing the devil is trying to pressurize you to do. Me too, I've been tempted. Oh, look up. Me, that I'm your pastor. I face several temptations. Ah, let me tell you two or three. One has to do with money. Another one has to do with power. The other one has to do with women. The one that has to do with money, a senator's wife, I've told you this story before, invited me, Pastor Prince Will, Please, we need to change all the equipment. And we know you as a man that understands sound. And we also know that you are a music man. I said to the glory of God, get us the best keyboard, keyboard in town and all the equipment. He said, I've sent somebody to go and price. This is the amount. So they gave me the amount of money, the bulk amount of money, and gave me a driver to follow me. So the driver st stayed in the car. I got to the place where I got the equipment. I saw the keyboard cheaper than the amount, the best. All the equipment I bought, and I had about um, that time, that time I had about 40 or 50 or 60, I can't remember the amount. But it's a very big, huge amount of money. Those days, left over. And this is a senator's wife. These people have money. It's, these are a set of people that you believe don't, have, don't need money. So as I got back to their house in, at Bodija, I drove, parked, they called their, uh, their megad and their uh, staffs, domestic staffs. Oh yeah, come, our father is here. They offloaded all the equipment. Something was saying to me in my heart, ah, with this 60,000, 
your life is better. That time, 60,000 was like 600 now. With this 60,000, the devil was just telling me all the things I could do with the money. And there is nobody that doesn't have need. Oh, do you not have need? Who doesn't have need here? Nobody doesn't have need. So, every, the devil was just showing me. The woman said, ah, my father, my father, my father, please come to the kitchen. Come to the kitchen. There was a dining on, in their kitchen. Please come, sit down and eat. I ate. I was still delaying the final delivery of my report. Then by the time we finished eating, ah, my father, my father, let's get to our petrol station. At Bodija, we got to the petrol station. He said, please fill his tank up. They fill my tank with fuel. I said, man, I wanted to tell you something from the house. He said, what is that? What's that, sir? The things you sent me, man, the things you sent me, I have about 60,000 naira left over. She looked at me. You have 60,000 left over? I brought it out. This is it, man. He said, no. Pastor, this is the first time I have ever sent anyone anything with money that decided to come back with change. Everybody I've sent have always come back to tell me that money is not enough. Which means if I had said it's not enough, she would have given me more. So as I brought the money, he said, no, sir, my father is for you. Ah, instantly something said, I would have stolen from myself. And I would have sinned against God. Because in this, in this teaching, I will show you, every single time you fall into, uh, into temptation, you fall from a peculiar grace and plan of God. Because hear me, temptations always come at the junctions of promotion. Every time God wants to take you into a new level, the devil comes to tempt you. Every time God wants to take you to a new level, the devil comes to tempt you. So every single time you fall into temptation, you lose out in the new level that God is bringing. That's why I always tell our Christian brothers that when you start dating, don't have sex. He said, the devil will put his temptation around it. She be girlfriend, mini. She be sister, Timo Fefeni. She be Timo Fefeni, Bobo, you know, Timo Fefeni. As long as I'm about to leave pastor anymore, anybody anymore, nobody is your wedding. Is there any unlawful uh, any reason why you should not be joined together in love and can you come? say you are taking who said you come back and bring us Every single time you are falling into fornication, I mean into into temptation, you are falling out of a peculiar grace of God. You know what the woman did? She gave me that money. I said, my father, thank you. She now started telling me other servants of God that she have sent errands that she later discovered stole from her. Let me tell your neighbor. Say the most important relationship in your life that you must not lose is your relationship with God. Turn to another person again. Say the most important relationship in your life that you must seek to always protect it's your relationship with God. Yes. You must seek to always protect it. Because some of you are saying, who sent to me? That's why we may know you as Christian bro. In church, God may not know you at all. That's why I say, many will come to me on that last day and say, in your name we cast out devils. You see, I will say to them, they pass from me, and you initiate, you walk us of iniquity. I know you not. But we knew them as tongue speaking. You know what? Those people fell. In the place of temptation. Now, the second one, what did I say the second one would be? One is money. Second one is power. Yes. This day I went to the mountain to pray. Ah, I went to the mountain to pray. If you ask an engineer and say, he at one day once he is looking for faithful men that he can hand his business over to. Abi, relax and just be giving instruction. You know, he at one day when he he at one day Christian and say, ah, you are born in or of this side, she might say, came out of me, Joa. Yeah, you are not with Jimmy Solo. So, see, Okachi, I was going to be a tech unfair. Ah, man, yeah. To lose your God. 
iru ya to nje awon ni abi iru ya wo lo nje apo ah ton ba pe se mi lo re se mi lo ka won na ni ke mi na ti e de ni omo kan ti mi na a pe iyawo lo wa nje ya se mi lo re yes uri uri se se ya lo nje yan ti landlord ba ti kan le kon bayi tabi to 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 igba to ba ma so ba ma pe bayi abi o ma o ke ah se aduro owo e ni se dadi se mi lo re ma ko le o ta dajo e fodun kan ha e wo e ja wo wa solution so ro le ti wa o Sharikiko sent here, okay, he had no grade. So he had okay, so he had okay, so he had okay, so he had okay, so he had only grade, several grade. He had only grade, so he had only grade, so he had only grade. Ah! Kindebe. Kati edibo. That's why you say, ah, don't vote for stingy OB, don't vote for criminal article. He's trying to downgrade so that he too can have vote. We sent here out there. So, but Simon, he at Simon song by he at on Jawan by he he at on Jenny at a cool level. He at could see member, could see who, could see on Jack, could see anything. We are not bad. We are lovely. Okay. We are filled with people. Could let you in. Pass up. Could let you in. I can't run away. Is sinking in. See a bear and no one by. Ta ba de ti fe pe oruko e ni pe Jesu yen ton ni oruko Jesu ko Jesu Jesu ti ahun yin ba ti kan be n te ba ti so ase ni I it was a strong temptation mo mo ya wo oko de ori oke yen ni I was thinking do I do this thing and they will be mentioning names. Eh, Baba, Baba, Kinika, Baba, Igba, Baba. I wanna share for more. Eh, come on. I share the woman. I share the movie solo. Beloved, my word is in your hands. So you ah singing. Mumi dulo, mumi dulo, Baba. Mumiduro dukmi Jesu olu abi Mumiduro dukmi If I, when I came back, I told my wife, I was married then, I called some of our pastors, uh, you know, I called them pastors, they were not pastors, they are the people that stood with me. So I just gave them all, you, you evangelists, you this, at least, come on, no, at least, okay, I need follow her. That's why if I have called you pastor those days and you are calling yourself pastor now, you discover you don't have calling. Don't deceive yourself. <laughs> Go back to your business. <laughs> ah, it's true. My king fi ntimo kwe kubahe. Because those days, you know, at least evangelist, pastor, we are calling all of them. But thank God for most some of them have realized that I was the one that called them. It's not God that called them. So they are doing their businesses back. It wasn't easy. Oh, do you want me to deceive you? I won't deceive you. Why will I deceive you? I've told myself this truth, and I've told my wife and children, I want to make heaven. I, me, I want to go to heaven. That's the ultimate. Oh. Because I have seen that fire has burned my hand before, hot water has burned my hand before. I have seen that it's not easy to live inside. It's only, he only touched you once. The pain is not to not be living there. I don't want to go to a fire. And I will not, because of anything of this world, go to a fire. Because I've discovered that everything about this world is not even permanent. And it does not even satisfy the soul. To satisfy soul. It does not satisfy the soul. That's one thing I've discovered. Because if it satisfies the soul, someone like Baba Tinumbu at that age will not be looking for presidency. That man has everything. He has 
He can call the president at one time. The president will come. Governors come to prostrate. He will tell you, you are going to be the next governor. And nobody will oppose it. But these things don't satisfy their soul. So you know what? I told myself that I won't because of these natural things. I conquered that temptation. It was hard. But I conquered. What about sex? I must tell you all these things so for you to know that everybody... And listen, I've told you and I'll be telling you. When we talk about battle of temptation, it's not a one-time battle. It's a lifetime battle. That you are not falling into sex now does not mean you cannot fall tomorrow. That's why you must live like you can fall so that you will not fall. My mentor said, he asked Pastor Adeboe, what do you do to conquer and not to fall into sexual sin? He said, I don't trust myself. That the moment you begin to trust yourself, you will fall because you will be careless. So, this particular day, the day I was, I will have, I will have fallen down to sexual sin. I didn't know. I used to see myself as almighty brother Prince Will. Ask my wife. I, in, the church, in the church where we were raised, they know me as fire. I got born again. I changed my name from Mukaila to Paul. I, I read Bible. Like, within three months, I became a pastor in our church. Within three months, I was in almost every department. The head of ushering, I mean, of, uh, we didn't have ushering in our church. Head of uh, 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 intercessory, head of uh, prayer pray, pray, pray warrior, head of evangelism, head of visitation. I was setting up branches, but my pastor didn't have a system of branch. We go and set up house fellowship cells. So give us people to go and pastor them. People were following me as if I was the general overseer of the church. So I used to say someone like me, like, like, until one day, I won't forget, I was even married. I was at home. We had a video club in, on our street. I, need, I, I, I wanted to eat rice. My wife had gone to a cosmetic store. So I called the lady that we, put, we employ our sales girl. As I called her, she came. Daddy, I opened the gate for her. I sat in the sitting room. Joloba, my boy, being me move her rice. She said, no problem, sir. Ask my wife, at, 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 when we say somebody is fasting, he animal, so it. But this particular day, as she got to the kitchen, she was looking for the plate. She couldn't find it. She said, Daddy, me, my rabbi. Confident that I was coming. Was, okay, uh, Jackie, what about you? As I entered the kitchen, she was busy looking for plates. I don't know. It was like they just put electric on my body. Everything just began to rise. I said, grab her now, grab her now, grab her now, grab her now, grab her. Grab her, she was there. Ah. And she was sitting there. Daddy, when he came, when he, you know what I did? Me, she, she didn't turn back because she was still looking for plate and was doing it judiciously, you know? <laughs> I just, I, I was just going like this. I was just going like this. Going like this, going like this, and I entered one of our rooms and locked the door. He said, Daddy, Enida, me, Rabo, Muni, me, Ojara, Isimo, Shani, Kingwani, Muni, Rara, O, me, Ojara, Is, Omo, Koma, Allah, Tobati, Denu, Gate, Bami, Padlock, Gate, Mahapi, Etim, Bati, Shetan, Daddy, me, Go, Wak, Kalek, Daddy, me, Go, Kote, So, Muni, Anima, Allah, Se, Se, It happened to me. I used to see myself as a mighty man. But that day I, I discovered that even in the mightiness, I'm a man. In your name? So when she left, I had pra, pra the padlock. I ran to my wife's shop. She need your cosmetics there. She because I went to Sincerely, can I tell you this truth? If that thing didn't happen that day, I would have been careless with my life. 
From that day, I discovered that I am a man. My body can move. So from that day, I began to guide myself. From ah, in before I can, I used to cancel ladies time to wear. I said nothing will happen. And her sister said, "Joko, maybe you are like that." What's in law? What's in law? Say a day she, oh my she. Temptation. Now listen. What is it that the lady was that beautiful? No. I told myself after some days that wait, if I had had sex with this lady, I would have blamed myself all my life. That will I because of this? I'm sorry to use the word thing. It's not a despise to her, whoever that person is. I was, I was saying, is it because of this thing? I will have thrown my relationship with God away, my relationship with my wife away. But at that moment that the temptation was strong, it was like if I didn't do it, I've lost something. Are you learning at all? Please learn. Now, do you know that that was where we form our policies from? I don't go to females' house alone. No matter who you are. Even if you are the one giving us the whole money we need in church. I don't go to females' house alone. If you call me, hello, sir. Hello, sir. Ibo lewa. Emma bo. If I don't get my wife ar around, I will get another minister in the church. Brother Lagbaja, where are you? Sister Samuel, where are you? Let's go. Because I have had, oh God, one of my pastor friends. Maybe we may, I thought we would go beyond this today, but let's, let's see if we can go beyond this. We, are, we have just uh, 10 minutes more. One of my pastor friends, do you know how he fell? A lady was crying in his office. And you know, he has this attitude of calling sisters in church. Sweetheart. He's just like, as mommy and I was singing, I said, come on, sweetheart, you are singing great. He said, he's like, sister, you're so, come on, come on, come on. Sweetheart, you are doing well. <coughs> Pastor didn't know that all the sweetheart, sweetheart, sweetheart he was calling was marking an impression in the heart of those ladies while his own heart was clean. You know where he went to fall? It was in Poracot. He went to minister. A lady came in and was crying. To the hotel. And he's the type. You say, come to the hotel. You can come see me. I'll counsel you. I'll pray for you. He was petting the lady. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. And you know, women are emotional. That's how they are created. I've told you last week, Sunday, they think they receive information by, from the right side of the brain. The right side of the brain is a sense where the emotion sense is. Before it gets to the logic, they will have taken action. Why the baby the lady was crying? Pastor was saying it's okay. She held the pastor. Pastor, pastor. The lady was the pastor too was saying, "Come on, uh, sweetie, sweetie, sweetie. It's okay. It's okay." The lady was holding. Go to more. Pastor have put the trousers out. He has done it. Now the pastor now did it. Come on. He now told his secretary, a female secretary, I don't know how to tell my wife. You know what the secretary did? The secretary now arranged another lady for pastor. Without pastor knowing that I know the weakness of my pastor. Go to his office and go and cry. That one went to the office and cried. Pastor had sex. Again, secretary and the pastor now started teaming up together to collect money from pastor. We will go to the press. We will go to the press. Pastor started pumping money. That was when Pastor now realized that he needed to tell his wife. My wife helped me. As I'm talking to you now, the pastor is dead. So you must be careful. A lot of people are falling every day on the platter of temptation. I pray for you in the name of Jesus. The wisdom to escape the, the temptation trap of the devil. Receive now in Jesus' name. Amen. So don't forget, develop the courage to say no. At the present time, 
when you discover that there is nothing, sorry, sorry, at, at that present time, then you will discover that there is nothing special about, the, about what the devil is trying to entice you into. Now let me read it again because of those of you writing. Develop the courage to say no at that present time. Then you will discover that there is nothing special about what the devil is trying to entice you into. My mentor, we always say that's my mentor's wife. Mommy Adela Kun said, she used to say to herself, anytime I am angry, I don't talk. I picked that from her. That anytime I am angry, I don't talk. Do you know why? There are 80% chances of saying jargons. Of saying things that you will later regret. So he says, whenever she's angry, she will just keep quiet. But you know, at such times, when you are angry, there's going to be this press. This press. And it's sorrow. And it's sorrow. Monico sorrow. Monico sorrow. That uh, uh, officer that shot that gun at Lecky, don't think that he just shot the bullet. It was temptation too. When they told us about his rank, the man was a senior officer in the police. Somebody whose retirement remained about three years. The lady lawyer must have said something that got him irritated. And instead of him to, to look away, that's why I see, if there's something you should pray for today, eh, as I'm going to summarize, you are going to be praying for grace, I mean, sorry, courage to say no when you are supposed to say no. That's one of the things I want, I will lead you to pray for today. Courage to say no when you are supposed to say, there is always a time to say no. When people don't use that courage, that's when they fall. Let me summarize. Our first major lesson today for today is this. God will not put pressure on you to do what contradicts his word. Or what contradicts morality. So you must understand that God will not put pressure on you to do what is wrong. Understand that temptation is always a strong prayer to do the wrong thing. 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 That's why if you are tempted, James chapter 1, let's summarize with James chapter 1 verse 13. James chapter 1 verse 13. We'll continue next week. Second service. James chapter 1 and verse 13. He said, let no one say, when he's tempted, I am tempted by God. Can you see? For God cannot be, be tempted by evil, nor does he himself tempt anyone. Leave this on screen. Can you see? So no one that is facing temptation, you say, ah, alone no, 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 no. You know what temptation is? The devil has seen that there's a new level God wants to take you into. He seeks for permission. Because he wants to prove to God that you are not qualified. So he will seek for permission to see God. Ele lo fe promote. Ele lo fe bless. Ele lo fe bless. O le bless el. Let me tell you one more story. We'll summarize with it. Many years ago, I'm telling you a story of, um, this should be about 19 or 16 years ago, less one of the two. I was fasting. I needed power. That was the problem. Lord, I want to go to mortuaries and empty it. Power that I'll be walking on the road and the, the blind, the deaf, and I was just praying all kind of prayer. In the first day of my prayer, I've told some of you that I've been here long enough, I saw that we were having a program just like as Brother Amos is tapping the keyboard now. He just pressed a wrong key and it distracts me. And I look at that direction and I place a curse. I woke up. I had in my ear 
I will never give my power to an impatient man. The second day too, I continue my fast. Lord, I will not break this fast. Lord, I will not break this fast. The second day, it was in the same dream I saw that I was preaching and one of the children just misbehaved. I placed a curse straight. I didn't hear any voice. The third day of my fast, it was an instrumentalist again that distracted me in my dream. As I placed the curse, I had son, go and eat. If you don't conquer anger, I will not empower you. Do you know why? There is this strong temptation for the empowered to misuse the power. Temptation I want to one lay. Come about okay. Temptation I want to look at you. Make up your mind. I know as young, young brothers and sisters, there's this temptation to want to make you feel that you should meet up with your mates. And the devil is placing this thing around sin. Please don't fall to it. Don't fall to it. Machine continue. Very good thing. Ah, oh she ya oh she ya oh me okay ah. Can shout it wash your egg bar. Don't fall to it. Ibito mag be in sin iko maro. Young lady too. You are looking at it. Eh eh eh. See, all my young sisters. Hear me, my young ladies. Take me as your father in the Lord. Don't go into the wrong thing because you want to take care of your parents. They won't answer for you on the day of judgment. Oh. We used to sing that song when we were young believers. That great day is coming. That great day is coming. All men shall stand before the throne of God and give account of themselves. Ah, I, I will stand. You will stand. My father will stand. My mother will stand. All men shall stand before the throne of God. And give account of them. Three Three Conquer that temptation. Next week I'll be telling you more. But please learn. At the point of temptation, it looks as if if you don't do that thing, you are going to lose out. So we all are going to jump up on our feet. Lord, give me the courage to say no when I'm supposed to say no. Jump up on your feet and begin to pray. Begin to pray for yourself. Courage to say no. When I'm to say no. Are you praying? The courage to say no. When I'm supposed to say no, Lord grant me. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Let me pray for you. Father, we ask that you strengthen us. If there's anyone here who has fallen into, into temptation already and wants to return to you, Father, please I ask, let there be a release of grace for them to be restored back to you in the name of Jesus. We that are standing, Lord, by your grace, Help us that will not fall. Amen. We ask for fresh grace to be able to say no when we are supposed to say no. Amen. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, I pray. Now open your eyes. How many of you are coming for the first time? This is your.